Daniels, uh, now begin our second round of question. Uh, you have five minutes to the gentle lady from California, Ms. Torres. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, Mr. Um, Sun, I have here a statement uh, from, it's testimony from uh, Paul Irving, uh, the former Sergeant at Arms, and this is a testimony he gave to the Senate um, at a hearing. And he states, on January 5th, Chief Sund and I participated in a web-based interagency conference call with multiple law enforcement partners, the FBI, the MPD, the U.S. Secret Service, the U.S. Park Police, and the Military District of Washington, among other law enforcement agencies from the National Capital Region. Based on the intelligence and threat assessment, everyone on the call believed that we were prepared and the plant met the threat. So you were prepared for what you thought would be a typical uh, demonstration, a First Amendment demonstration on Capitol Hill, such as the Women's March, when we all wore our pink hats and came out and marched um, against some of the efforts um, of the President. Um, what you did not anticipate, none of you anticipated, that a Republican member of Congress would tell the crowd on stage, um, today is the day American patriots start talk, taking down names and kicking ass, and our ancestors sacrificed their blood, their sweat, their tears, their fortunes, and sometimes their lives. Are you willing to do the same? You didn't anticipate that, did you? We, we anticipated some minor skirmishes. We did not anticipate. But you didn't a anticipate a member, a Republican member of Congress, to go on stage and incite the crowd like this. You also didn't anticipate the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, to tell this, you know, mob that was armed, trial by combat. You also didn't anticipate the president of the United States telling an armed mob to march to the Capitol and that to start walking to the Capitol. I mean, you didn't, you could not have anticipated any of that, did you? Well, knowing now that there is intelligence. Not. And um, I believe when you say that, sir, because I do not believe that anyone in charge of the men and women um, that serve us here in um, the U.S. Congress um, if they had known any of that intelligence, would have acted very differently than, than we did that day. But I still want you to know that I am grateful for my life, that I am grateful that the officers used their own bodies to protect us, that they bravely fought against um, these very angry uh, rioters who came here to do violence, to hang the vice president. Um, this past weekend, the former president has said he would pardon those convicted, the ones convicted, of crimes associated with January 6th, including individuals like Enrique um, Tario, the leader of the Proud Boys, who was convicted of seditious conspiracy and sentenced to 22 years in prison. Mr. Sun, how does that make you feel to hear that the former president talks about pardoning defendants who assaulted your officers uh, during that violent attack and assault on our democracy. Again, I feel if they assaulted the officers, they need to have pay the consequences. I, um, I feel really badly um, for everything that has happened um, since uh, the officers, uh, the suicides. Uh, no one deserved that. Um, I have here, I wanted to really stay focused on who to blame, um, you know, who is to blame for everything that happened on January 6th. And you know, I attended this peaceful transfer of power um, on this inauguration when this president um, took the oath to serve this country and to protect, you know, the rule of law and democracy. I also attended, um, I, by the way, I was not wearing a vest um, at this ceremony because Democrats did not incite a crowd and say those Russians that interfere in our election, you know, uh, were at fault for us losing. We took the loss and we did 
the right thing by ensuring that we had a peaceful power of transfer. Unfortunately, when I attended um, Mr. Biden's inauguration, I had to wear a vest because I no longer felt safe. With that, I yield back.